Welcome everyone to Team Yuma's Dramatis Lectio, in which we select stories to read, memorable stories, stories of powerful warriors and things that powerful warriors do in made-up fantasy worlds. At least that's the theme of tonight, I think. I'm not quite sure if I actually understand what the story of this piece of literature is, but then again, I'm not alone. I'm pretty sure most humans have a trouble understanding whatever this thing is. By the way, this is The Eye of Argon by Jim Thais, which was written, a novella by the way, that was written in the 1970s. And ever since then, it has gained the popularity of the most, uh, one of the most appalling prose's, infamously bad stories of the 20th century. Really? Really. With in fact, in fact, uh, there is a game, a party game involving this story that was, uh, that became popular ever since that. Um, in sci-fi conventions, to be specific. Basically, a group of friends, two or more, would gather around, take this novella, read it aloud, okay. And uh, try not to laugh while doing so. This should be easy for us, then. Oh, yes, especially since we are survivors from My Immortal. Oh, yeah. Uh, but... You try to do that game with My Immortal, you cannot survive more than one sentence. Yeah, you'd, you'd be passing the book along like as if it was uh, popcorn. Speaking of passing along, here's how the game works. And we're going to adopt those rules as well. Basically, one starts reading, and as soon as that guy who's, who's reading laughs, then the ball, the figurative ball, goes to the next in line. And so on and so forth. Question. Yes? If you make me laugh, do, will that count as a pass? No. Oh, so in other words, the story has to make me laugh. Exactly. And also... Uh, the one who's listening, the guy reading, is allowed to laugh only once. Only once? Yes. Alright. By the way, I should, I should uh, mentally prepare you for the massive undertaking that we're about to get us uh, embroiled with. Well, better make it quick. We have two minutes left. You know, our usual five-minute intro thing. <laughs> Thank you for wasting 30 seconds, by the way. <laughs> this is... Possibly one of the most uh, uh, potent and prime examples of purple prose. And in case you don't know what purple prose is, purple prose is an overwritten narrative, fattened and filled to the brim with as many adjectives, adverbs, synonyms, and fancy words as possible, to the point that the story itself become illegible. It's a typical amateurish tool of writing that really pretentious people adopt in order to make their stories sound smarter than they really are, when in fact they really don't make much sense because they are illegible. And I've had a small taste of this story beforehand, so let me tell you, uh, it's not the worst example of purple prose I've ever come across, that Honor belongs to a My Little Pony fanfiction of all bloody things. <laughs> In fact, not even a My Little Pony fanfiction proper, no, it was a, a Fallout Equestria side fic. Oh, gosh. Of all things. But still, The Eye of Argon is possibly the most infamous example of purple prose that was actually published. Wow, this was published? This was published. With this cover that looks like it was taken and photoshopped somehow? I a... actually don't know that, but Cause it looks regardless. Because like it looks like a hole with painted green and yellow, just to look like an eye. Yes, you have a hold of the cover, I don't, so... Anyway, uh, we should start reading, so, um... <laughs> okay, <laughs> who goes first? This? Rock, paper, scissors, man hug? Oh, uh, it's a bit hard to do that on Skype, but... <laughs> mm. Okay, um, Devar. What, yeah? Uh, think of a color. Alright. Is it black? No. Okay, then I start. Alright. 
<laughs> that was simple. Mm. Anyway, this is The Eye of Argon by Jim Thais. Yes, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Oh, I'm going to be calling him Jim Theus right now. <sighs> it's probably not right either, but... I'm going to be calling G Jim uh, Tears Down My Thesis. <laughs> oh, no! Anyway, let's start. Chapter 1. The weather-beaten tra uh, trail wound ahead into the dust racket climbs of the barren land which dominates large portions of the Norgolian Empire. By the way, barren is misspelled. Uh, we are missing an R. Yeah. Age-worn hoofprints, smothered by the sifting sands of time, shone duly against the dust splattered crust of earth. This is the story, guys. This is it. If you understood anything up until this point, then congratulations, you get a metaphorical cookie. Ooh! <laughs> You're making me laugh, by the way, not the story. Sorry. The tireless sun cast its parching rays of incandescence from overhead, halfway through the, its daily revolution. Uh, it's a uh, evolution revolution of love, I hope. Small rodents scampered about. I'm allowed to make jokes, by the way. Small rodents scampered about, occupying themselves in the daily accomplishments of their dismal lives. Dust sprayed over three heavy mounts in blinding clouds, while they bore the burdensome cargoes of their struggling overseers. I'm okay. Wow. But yeah, this is this is definitely not full of words to make it sound fantastical. <laughs> um, yes, and I'm only able to understand half of the words here. What bard on some, I'm pretty sure it's a typo. Um, it could be burd burdensome? You know, when you uh, try oh so hard to sound smart when you write your story, it only, well... It only becomes more blatant that you're not when you make typos. I feel, I believe that the better word for this could have been burden. Yes, in a normal story would have, but this is purple prose, damn it. This is the eye of argon, damn it. We had to fatten each and every sentence as much as it is humanly possible. Oh gosh, Maddo, be honest with me. I'm gonna get a narrative cholesterol from this, aren't I? Yes. Oh gosh! You're going to have a sugar rush of, of adverbs and adjectives. Prepare to embrace your creators in the Stygian haunts of hell, barbarian! gasped the first soldier. Only after you have kissed the fleeting stead of death, wretch! return a uh, Grigner. A Grigrin. Grig. It's, what is this, a, is this a, like the most awkward Warcraft name I've ever heard? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be. Gri 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 Thrall. He's Thrall. Yes, he's Thrall from now on. It's easier. <laughs> ah, now I can do that. A sweeping blade of flashing steel riveted from the massive barbarian's hide. Enameled shield as his. <laughs> Did you laugh at the story? No, I'm laughing because... <laughs> what the hell is enameled? <laughs> enameled, I think it means. Enameled? You know, like... Uh, I'm trying to remember what the word means, because I I've know... Never seen... <laughs> yeah, I've never seen this word in my life. <laughs> I've heard it once, but... Uh... Enameled shield... Okay, you have to uh, continue from this point, Davar. Alright, uh... Flashing steel riveted from the massive barbarian's hide, enameled shield, as his rippling right arm thrust forth, sending a steel shod blade to the hilt into the soldier's vital organs. <laughs> the disemboweled mercenary crumbled from his saddle and sank to the clouded sward. Sward? It, uh, it's the clouded sword, apparently. Okay. It, 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 What's about? It, it, but I like. Okay, I like the. Apparently, 
The, the blade is so precise that it hits very specific internal organs, by the way, so, bypassing the flesh altogether. So, so, <laughs> That's the, so the clouded sword is like... It, what is this? The barbarian from Simon Sorcerer 3D? <laughs> Who goes a big sword? Okay, uh, okay I'm gonna carry on. Sprinkling the parched dust with crimson droplets of escaping life fluid. <laughs> You do not know how hard it is for me. <laughs> Escaping life fluid! <laughs> you have no idea of how hard I am trying not to laugh. Escaping life fluid because, you know, he couldn't just say blood. It had to be escaping life fluid. He, he couldn't even use the term Icor either. Or Icor. I don't know es how to... Escaping life fluid, everybody. That's yeah. that's the benchmark of of this story so far. That, that, that's <laughs> the infused barbarian swiveled about his shock of fear by can't chew. The enthused barbarian swiveled about his shock of fiery red hair tossing robustly in the humid air currents as he faced the attack of the defeated soldier's fellow in arms. Swiveled, by the way, folks. That's what got me. Swiveled. It's like as if it was swiveling in a chair. <laughs> Apparently, his fiery red hair is shock to be tossed around robustly. <gasps> this... So shocking red hair. That's... Just... Yeah. I think they got us. It's they got us. They... They get blinded by it. Yeah, they have to censor it. It's that shocking. Damn you, barbarian! Shrieked the soldier as he observed his comrade in death. Well, there's a comrade in life, comrade in arms, and a comrade in death. I guess we cover all the bases. How poetic. Anyway, a gleaming scimitar smote a heavy blow against the renegade's spiked helmet, bringing a heavy cloud over the accordion's misting brain. Misting brain. Okay. Shaking off the effects of the pounding blow to his head, Grigner brought down his scarlet streaked hedge against the soldier's crudely forged hauberk. Is it a French word? Uh, hauberk? Or Hoberg? <laughs> I have no idea. <coughs> yeah. Clanging armlessly to the left side of his opponent, the soldier's st steed whinnied as he directed the horse back to the driving blade of the barbarian. Oh, it wasn't a horse. I actually didn't gather that up until now. By the way, Hoberg is a piece of armor originally covering only the neck and shoulders, but later consisting of a full-length coat of mail or military tunic. Thank you, Google search guy. Yes, thanks, Google. You always help me with writings as well. Gregner leashed his mount forward as... Oh, Gregner was on a horse too. Thank you for telling me that story. You haven't bothered to up until this point. Uh, Gregner leashed his... You know, this is a really terribly written story. Not only that, but he tries to sound so smart about it. And yet he forgets to mention vital details up until they just feel coming out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like the wrong order. Grigner leashed his mount forward as the hoarsely piercing battle cry of his wilderness bred race. <laughs> his, his wilderness bred race. <laughs> wilderness bred race? <laughs> so you're telling me that 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 he was bred in the wilderness by scientists? Science! <laughs> Barbarian science! <laughs> okay, okay, you have to continue. <laughs> okay. Piercing battle cry of his wilderness blood race resounded from his grinding lungs. Grinding lungs. Wow. Yes, okay. it's, it's, it's part of the Kama Sutra after all. Uh, well, I think... Well, now I'm imagining a machine that's literally grinding his lungs as he fights. <laughs> yeah. A twirling blade bounced, bounced harmlessly from the mighty thief's buckler as his, riding, as his, uh, as his rolling right, right arm cleft upward, sending a foot of blinding steel ripping through the Cimmerian's exposed gullet. <laughs> a gasping gurgle 
from the soldier's writhing mouth as he tumbled to the golden sand at his feet and wormed agonizingly to his deathbed. So he has a bed apparently nearby. That's very convenient. This is, uh, wow, this is Shakespeare, uh, Barry Pratchett, uh, Charles Dickens, uh, he dwarfs everyone with this. I know. I am. Wow. I mean, this tells me so much about what's going on. And so little at the same time. Yes, here's the problem with Purple Bros. It vomits words after words after words, but at the end of it, it explains and it establishes so little. It uses so much to tell so little. How embarrassing. It's Albert Wesker of uh, villainry diarrheas talking. Yes, okay. if Al yes, if Albert Wesker was a thespian. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm laughing about that, not at the story. I know. Okay. Grigner's emerald green orbs glared <laughs> lost- Emerald <laughs> green orbs! He couldn't say eyes! It had to be orbs! It's orbs, because it sounds better than eyes, I guess? Because it's smart, now shut it! <laughs> now let me t tell the story, for it is the story of old. Yeah, okay, 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 freaking Patrick Stewart, go on. Orbs glared lustfully at the wallering soldier, struggling before his chestnut sw swirled mount. His scowling voice reverberated over the dying form in a tone of mocking mirth. You city bred dog should learn not to antagonize your better. Reining his weary mount ahead, Grigner, which is not capitalized by the way, the name, resumed yep. his journey to the Norgolorly Norglo Norglogolian <laughs> city of Gorzam. <laughs> the Norgolian city of Gorzam. <laughs> that was a very difficult word for me, apparently. Norgolian city of Gorzam, hoping to discover wine, women, and adventure to boil the wild blood coursing through his savage veins. What, so wine and women is not adventurous enough for you? You talk about uh, high standards. The trek to Gorzam. Go wait. Okay, they, they said Gorzam earlier, but now it's Gorzom. Wow. The trek to Gorzom was forced upon Grigner when the soldiers of Kryn were leashed upon him by a faithless concubine he had wooed. His scandalous <laughs> activities throughout the Samarian city had unleashed throngs of havoc and uproar among its refined patricians, leading them to tack, uh, to tack a heavy reward over his head. This is possibly the most uh, comprehensible uh, paragraph we've read so far. Yeah. He had barely managed to escape through the back entrance of the inn he had been guzzling in. Guzzling. As a squad of soldiers taunched upon him. Taunched, I think. I don't know. I don't know the, I, what this word is. <laughs> after spilling a spout of blood from the leader of the mercenaries, as he dismembered one of the officer's arms, he retreated to his mount to make his way towards Gorzom, rumored to contain horde of plunder and many young wenches for any man who had the backbone to wrest them away. Yes, by the way, get used to having women referred to as wenches in this story. Um, okay, anytime the author uses the term wenches, he gets a metaphorical slap to the face. Or she. Because we never know if it's a man or a woman. Oh wait, it is. It's Jim Faze. Of course it's going to be a man. I, I, I highly doubt a woman would write this in 1970. You never know. This is clearly a quintessential male power fantasy. Mm hmm. Yes, so... it, it definitely must be a man then, in this case. <laughs> okay, so should I continue? Uh, actually, no. Uh, I'm, I'm going. Uh, every time there is a new chapter, okay, uh, okay. we switch. By the way, a great chapter one. <coughs> he kills a couple of guys, he rides to a city, and that's that. 20 that's minutes. 20 minutes, guys, and Madhog summarized it in 10 seconds. Yes, that, that, that's what happens. And in the meantime, we're missing fundamental aspects of establishing the world and building said world. And characters, of course. Oh, well, like that, who cares about that when you have uh, women, wine, adventure? 
and life fluids everywhere. <laughs> Escaping life fluids. <laughs> Arriving after dusking Gorzom, Grigner, which is not only is it it's not capitalized, but it also attached to the comma. Great going. Grigner descended down a dismal alley, reining his horse before a beaten tavern. The red-haired giant strode into the dimly lit hostel hostelry. Oh, hostelry, I think. Ost dimly lit hostelry, reeking of foul odors and cheap wine. The air was heavy with choking fumes, spewing from small smoldering torches, which is apparently one unified word now. Well, English Dictionary, we're gonna have to add that now. <laughs> Encased within Theden's hearthen packed walls. I think it's meant to be the dens, but they forgot to put a space oh, between it. Oh, within the dens, earthen packed walls. My bed. No, wait, no, no, his bed, not mine. <laughs> yeah. Tables were clustered with groups of drunken thieves and cutthroats tossing dice or making love to willing prostitutes. Why am I getting... You know, you, know, you think that prostitutes by uh, the what is essentially their life profession would be willing to begin with. So you kind of don't need to uh, establish the fact that the prostitutes are willing. It seems, yeah. uh, you know... It seems uh, redundant, <laughs> but then yeah. again, uh, uh, the Eye of Argon being redundant, <laughs> that's crazy talk. Also, i like to add, this one paragraph, for some strange reason, reminds me of that one pilot episode of a uh, adult cartoon animation that was heavily influenced by Conan the Barbarian. I forgot what its name was, though. Hmm. Yeah, well... Carry on. Eyeing a slender female crouched alone at a nearby bench, Grigner advanced wishing to wholesomely occupy his time. <laughs> Wholesome family prostitution! Well then. <laughs> the flickering torches cast weird shafts of luminescence dancing over the half-naked harlot of his choice. Her stringy orchid twines of hair swaying gracefully over the li lithe opaque nose as she raised a half-drained mug to her pale red lips. Judging by this description, she's an alien yes. from, from outer space. Uh, yes, she definitely is an alien. <laughs> she's that alien singer from The Fifth Element. <laughs> I have a lot of she needs, really needs to go see a doctor. Anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, glancing upward. Uh, uh, glancing upward, the alluring complexion noted the stalwart giant. So, okay, so now the woman is referred to as the alluring complexion. Com well, well, there is objectifying, and then there's this. Okay, complexion is not a person. It is someone's uh, no, no, face. No, 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 an alluring complexion, that's different. No, 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 we're not... I'm going to be... A, I'm going to be picky about this. Uh, you're being picky. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well, that's just new. <laughs> Glancing upward, the alluring complexion noted the stalwart giant as he rapidly approached. So, okay, so... Uh, so the barbarian is now a stalwart giant and the woman is an alluring complexion. We went from names... Common names to <laughs> whatever this is. <laughs> I can't. I don't know why. I can't help but think. Of... To a series of adjectives, basically put together. I can't help but think now that that Grigner basically went up to this one really fast, like. <laughs> okay. Next thing you know, uh, the bartender is not going to be named bartender. He's going to be named the. The, Let's see. The, dr the, the drinker the, the, dispenser. The dispenser of cheap winery. That's, or something yeah, like that's, that. That's probably you know? better. Because, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, the Star Wars. A faint glimmer sparked from the pair of deep blue ovals.
Breathe it in, Madhog. Breathe it in. Breathe in Okay. Those. I am pretty sure it refers to eyes. Yes. Unless it means to say her ovaries, but to actually see her ovaries from that point of view, <laughs> it means she must have a really, really large birth canal, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and if they're blue, then <laughs> she's dead. No, she's an alien. Or maybe she's laying alien eggs. Oh, Either gosh. Way. Either way, this is taking us to a very uncomfortable mental image. So let's proceed. Blue ovals. Oh, my God. Ah, the deep blue ovals of the amorous female as she motioned toward Grigner, enticing him to join her. The barbarian seated himself upon a stool at the wench's side, exposing his body, naked save for a loincloth, brandishing a long steel broadsword, and I don't know, I cannot take this. <laughs> what is this turned into? Arnold Schwarzenegger? I was, I was holding a laugh. For quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm, I'll take it from here. Exposing his body. Let's okay. start there. Exposing his body. Naked. Save for a loincloth brandishing a long steel broadsword. So the loincloth is brandishing the sword? Uh... Apparently his, lo his cock is the broadsword. Oh, that's clever. An iron spiral battle helmet. And a thick leather sandals. A thick leather sandals. Uh, I think you can drop the ah to her un up unobstructed view. Wow! Wow! To her unobstructed view. That's, uh, oh man. <laughs> what can I say to this? <laughs> nothing. Thou hast need to occupy your time. Barbarian? Question the female? With a question mark? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, is the question is that, so is the question here, uh, did the female actually question this? Or maybe she's not a female? Is this what you're implying? So she's a man with boobs? Question the female? Or she a, or she a woman with male genitalia? Oh, I'm actually convinced now she's an alien. <laughs> we established this. Oh gosh, already I'm done. Okay, yes, you're pretty much done. <laughs> so question the female? That's... That's... That's so... What did I just read? <laughs> also... A que I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what this. Thou hast need to occupy your time, barbarian. Question the female. Only if something worth offering is within my reach. Nah, eh, eh, he says. Eh, wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> stated say no more. <laughs> yes. Stated Grigner as his hands crept to embrace the tempting female, who welcomed them with open willingness. Oh again, yes, it's like a like a glass of wine. Oh, I'm so tempted by you. <laughs> again, she's a prostitute. So, from where do you come, barbarian? And by what are you called? Gasped the complying wench. Why? Wait, why, why? Why do you gasp? Why? I mean, Did I mean, you? are they already doing it while they are introducing themselves? <laughs> That's very polite, yes, you know. That's very impolite. It's like that time Ross Ferris watched an anime that had uh, exposition sex. Oh. Oh, you're thinking about Ikitozen. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, exp God. Okay, exposition sex is possibly the best kind of exposition, <laughs> depending on which side of the exposition you are. <laughs> this is wrong. Yep, and we are reading it. Gasp! The complying wench, as Grigner smothered her lips with the blazing touch of his flaming mouth. <laughs> 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 the blazing touch of his flaming mouth. Oh my! God. Did, what, so he's a oh, oh. is he a fire is he a he's fire all. eater? Oh, he's on fire, all right. <laughs> he's a fire eater part time. <laughs> oh, this, oh man, no, he's a charmander. <laughs> 
Oh, gosh. Let's go with that because it's funnier. Now yeah. I imagine Charmander having sex with the female alien singer from The Fifth Element. Oh, yeah, that's the best fan fiction. Uh, I kind of wish I was reading that instead of this. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. The engrossed titan ignored the queries of the inquisitive female. <laughs> sure, add a freaking titan into the mix, it becomes a threesome. <laughs> Why not? Pulling her towards him and crushing her sagging nipples. Ugh. Sagging nipples. Does that I mean... Will, how old and worn is she? How old of an alien is she? Is she like 200, 300? To his hey. yearning chest. Without struggle, she gave in, winding her soft arms around the harshly bronze hide of Grigna, corded shoulder blades as, he, as, as his calloused hands caressed her firm, protruding busts. So, wow, okay, he's... Is Alpha Man Alpha God, apparently. Okay, so let me get this straight. This woman is not only really old, but apparently she has multiple breasts. If I'm reading this correctly. Caress their firm, protruding busts. Ah, you're right. Usually, usually if you want to use a word to describe a pair of breasts, you just need bust, not in plural. So this brings the question, how alien is this woman we're talking about? Oh, she, um, she must be the three-breasted woman from uh, Total Recall. Oh, let's go, let's one-up this. Maybe she's got six pairs of breasts, for we know. Okay. Careful now, careful. We're, we're dangerously close to enter Monster Girl Quest territory oh, there. Oh, gosh, you're right. You make love well, wench admitted Grigner as he reached for his for the vessel of potent wine. His charge has been quaffing. Uh, is it a metaphor for his penis or is literally wine we're talking about? I'm gonna, just gonna go with the wine for now. Okay. A flying foot caught the mug Grigner had taken hold of, sending its blood-red content sloshing over a flickering crescent, leashing Leashing tongues of bright okay, orange uh, no, wait, 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 there is a semicolon here in between crescent and leashing. Yeah? You did not actually uh, consider it. Ah, uh, yeah, I did that back. So. By the way, I imagine all this scene taking place in, in extreme slow motion. Like, the wine is slowly sloshing over the freckling crescent and whatnot, and, uh, and the barbarian is, is all like, no. My wine. I know I'd be like that with my wine. Honest, honestly, <laughs> with the way it is written, it seems like it's describing a scene happening in slow motion. Then again, this entire story is happening in slow motion with this freaking description that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yes, it definitely is like that. Okay. Leashing tongues of bright orange flame to the foot trodden floor. Remove yourself, Sirrah. The wench belongs to me. All your wench are belong to us. Blabbered a drunken soldier, too far consumed by the influences of his virile brew to take note of the <laughs> superior size of his adversary. His virile brew. Okay, apparently this brew has chest hair. <laughs> yeah, okay. Grigna lively bounded from the startled female, his face lit up to an ashen red ferocity, and eyes locked in a searing feral feral blaze towards the swaying soldier. To hell with you, <laughs> Braggard! <laughs> Bellowed the angered accordi accordion! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and tonight, on a very special musical performance, a barbarian playing the accordion. An angry <laughs> accordion, no less. <laughs> the accordion. <laughs> the barbarian is the angry accordion. But, by the way, folks, just so you know, it's e accordion, as in it's pronounced, it's got an E and C-O-R-D-I-N, so it's like... It's 
It's similar to accordion. That's why it's, so, that's funny. Why it's so funny to me. <laughs> you couldn't uh, use a different word, Arthur. Okay, you go. Bellow the angered accordion <laughs> as he hefted. I know it's still funny. As he the accordion as he hefted his finely honed broadsword. Oh no, he's gonna fight with his. Oh no. Okay, okay. I think the metaphors are kind of escaping our mind, much like the life fluid. No. The staggering soldier clumsily reached towards the pommel of his dangling sword. No! Devar, please. No. <laughs> you're making me laugh. Uh, with your reactions, you're making me laugh. That's very... That Sorry. is very... That's preposterously preposterous of you to be so baffled by such baffling bewilderment of a narrative device kind of storytelling extravaganza I got nothing from that I'm purple prosing myself <laughs> because why not that's not a good sign it's a very bad infection we need to get you to a doctor I do not require assistance from a facilitator of medicinal equipment that's wow that's that was bad yeah that was terrible <laughs> anyway where was I but, uh, but before his the, hands well with you burger uh, the stagger can't switch towards the Bellow the angered accordion as he after this finely born broadsword. The staggering soldier clumsily reached towards the pommel of his dangling sword. Which, yes, now that I think about it, it really sounds bad. But before his hands ever touched the oaken hilt of a sil uh, the oaken hilt, a silvered flesh was slicing the heavy high air. The heavy air. The thews of the savage's slashing right arm bulged from the glistering bronzed hide as his blade beat deeply into the soldier's neck. Wow, I didn't know blades could bite. You never stop learning things. Yeah. <laughs> Loping off the confused head of his senseless tormentor, are we sure that the sword in case is not the greater dog from Undertale? In, in which case, uh, he just wants to be petted. Also, uh, loping. I think he meant lopping off. Lopping off. Yeah, you know, like, as if you'd lopped off someone's head. Because that's a word. Yes. Anyway, oh, there are images later on in this story. Oh, Apparently, yeah. Apparently, it's an illustrated work. What do you know? Hmm. Anyway... With a nauseating... With a, with a nauseating thud, the severed oval... The... the, 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 the what? The severed... The, se the severed oval? So... Okay, uh, uh, Althor, what exactly do you mean by oval? Because I, fe I feel we need to understand this in order to proceed here. Uh, that, uh, I'm sure he's using it wrongly, but... It's a rounded, slightly elongated outline or shape that is an egg. So, you oh, mean... Oh. So, basically... Basically... Uh, Anything that is shaped like a circle or an egg in round shape. So, basically, is the capitated head yes. is a, an oval. Yes. Is, that is what you're saying here. Yes. That's what the author... Is trying to tell us. This is the dumbest idiocy. This is so stupid. This is stupid. I You're stupid. This is. This is. This is just. This is just buffling. The Preposterous. Author, the author, this is. This is. The uh, author tried to sound so smart that it went back to dumb. <laughs> wow. A severed oval. An oval! A head is an oval now! Okay. Severed oval toppled to the floor as the segregated torso of Grigner's bovine antagonist. Wait! Uh, was the soldier a cow? Was a drunken the, cow? A dr drunken cow? <laughs> did he just, did he just decapitate a, dr a drunken cow? How's <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a metaphor. 
I'm pretty sure it is, but nevertheless, it's really funny. It's really stupid. I don't understand why he would say bovine. I mean, I would understand if he if he said swine or pig, but instead he chose bovine. That just uh, that just perplexes me. Yes, that's very very perplexing to say the least. Gregor's bovine antagonist swayed, then collapsed in a pool of swirled crimson. It's a fountain. <laughs> are you sure you don't want? Are you? Sh well. We went from life fluid to swirled crimson. I don't know if it's better. <laughs> In the confusion, the soldier's fellows confronted Grigner with unseated cut catalysis. Unsheathed, by the way. With unsheathed catalysis. Unsheathed catalysis. So we have pirates now, apparently. <laughs> Army matey, directed toward the latter scowling makeup. <laughs> scowling makeup. Are they are they wearing kabuki masks now? The slut should have picked this quarry more carefully. I think he's referring to the guy he just killed, which is awkward because he was literally doing a slut moments ago, so that's confusing too. So, the guy was a slut as well, so that means... So, okay, so let's... Okay, let's actually, okay, actually, let's that summarize. makes sense. That makes sense. Let's actually summarize. The guy is a... The guy is a bovine, a slut, and an oval. Well, it makes total sense that I think about it. Everybody okay. in there is sluts. Is this taking place in space, in Mars? <laughs> is the guy fighting aliens? Is he Samurai Jack? I think even Samurai Jack wouldn't even take place in this nondescript world. <sighs> anyway. The slut should have quickened his query more carefully. Roar the victor in a mocking baritone growl. Oh, baritone. The slut should have picked his quarry more carefully. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Roared the victor in a mocking bite and growl as he wiped his dripping blade on the prostrate form and returned it to its scabbard. You don't want to know what I misread that as. Good. The fool should have shown more prudence. However, you shall rue your actions while rotting in the pits, stated one of the sprawled soldier's comrades. Are they cows too? Uh, th th apparently... Uh, uh, apparently, these are very well-educated bovines. Gregner's hand began to remove his blade from its leather housing, but retarded... Retarded? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no. I, I, I am trying very, very hard no, not to laugh at this, but it's a losing battle. <laughs> retarded the motion in face of the blades waving before his face retarded the motion retarded the motion tell me Madhog was novels back in the 70s very lax in how they use their words. Why, yes. Yes, they did. Because this is the most inappropriately use of the word I have ever read. Oh, that's that's saying the least here. That's the, the, that really... Um, <laughs> that's saying something. I mean, <laughs> I've seen this word being misused in many ways, but to signify a motion or a speed of a motion, of a physical motion, that's something new and wonderful. <sighs> so it's your turn now. Okay. Okay. Dismiss your hand from the hilt, barbarian, or you shall find a foot of steel sheathed in your gizzard. So they are promising to kick his butt, basically. Grigner weighed his position, observing his plight, whereupon he took the soldier's advice as the only logical choice. 
to attempt to hack his way from his present predicament could only warrant certain death. He was of no mind to bring upon his own demise in if an alternate path presented itself. In other words, is surrendering. Just get to the freaking point. The will to necessitate his life forced him to yield to the superior force in hopes of a moment <laughs> of carelessness later upon the part of his capital. By the way, carl carelessness is obviously misspelled. Yeah, it's it's like it's, it's carlessness. Like, it's Carl. Esnes. It's, you know, it's the party guy. Carl Esnes is such a fun guy to hang with. He's our favorite guy in the troops. You by, see? By, that, it's that Carl, such a goofball. By the way, by the way, Carl Esnes, where's Lenny Nessness? Somehow, I knew you were going to do that. I had no idea why I thought that joke would be funny. Okay. So, carelessness. Carelessness later upon the parts of his captors, in which he could effect a more plausible means of escape. With es involving escaping life fluid, I hope. You may steady your arms. I will go without a struggle. Your decision is a wise one. <laughs> Yet perhaps you would have been better off had you forced death. The soldier's mouth wrinkled to a sadistic grin of knowing mirth as he prodded his prisoner on with his sword point. I must say, this is the worst written Dungeon and Dragons campaign I've ever did read. Yes, and I haven't even got to roll the dice yet. After an indiscriminate period... Yeah, yeah, I did read that right. ...of marching through slinking alleyways and dim moonlighted streets the procession confronted a massive Seralagilio. Seralio? Seralagilio. Seralio. It's, it's an Italian word, but honestly, I'm surprised to find it here. I'm surprised as well, because I knew this wasn't an English word. Okay. <clears throat> the, the palace area was surrounded by an iron grating. Kick the grate. With a lush garden. Oh, upon... shut up! <laughs> with a lush garden upon all sides. The group was admitted through the gilded gateway and... <laughs> the gilded gateway? <laughs> now I am aging that <laughs> open gate to look like uh, the pubic area of a eunuch. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> the Gilded Gateway! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this story is not helping anybody with bad thoughts, apparently. Okay, uh, Gilded Gateway. And Grigner was, was led along a stone pathway. Which is apparently a whole word, led along. Yeah, I was trying to figure out whether that was actually... No, it's not. It's wrong. Yes, I thought it would be wrong, but I didn't want to... Say, just in case I was wrong. Okay, a stone pathway... Chances or... are you'd be right anyway, because it's the Eye of Argon that we're reading. Yeah, a stone pathway bordered by plush vegetation. Plush vegetation? Apparently, Excuse you? Apparently you can cuddle to these vegetations. Okay, so not only is vegetation spelled wrong, but apparently it's a plushie of a carrot. Instead of an actual carrot, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, the, what the hell is a plush vegetation? <laughs> Lustfully. Does it come in a limited edition? Oh, oh, well, this is, gets better. Lustfully enhanced by the moon's shimmering rays. Fascinating. Mm, I know. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, it definitely makes me want to eat a carrot. Upon reaching the palace, the group was granted entrance, and, a s and after several minutes of explanation- My gosh, this is all walking! Led through several winding corridors to a richly draped chamber. Also, as we go down, there's a picture here by J. Rickosh? Or Rixum? I can't read this word. It's- it's in handwriting. 
confronting the group was a short, stocky man seated upon a upon a. Apparently, it's like Epona, but instead, it's, it's with a. It's, okay, so upon and a uh, are once again comprised into one word. We seem to come across this problem many times here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out whether this is actually by the author or something else. Okay, up upon a golden fro throne, throne. I'm about to say something wrong then. Tapestries of richly draped regal blue silk covered all walls of the chamber, while the steps leading to the throne were plated with sparkling white ivory. Ooh, twilight Ooh. sparkling white ivory. <laughs> The man upon the Sorry. the man upon the throne had a naked wench seated at each of his arms. Because why wouldn't he? Yes, why wouldn't he indeed? And a trusted advisory who was also naked, seated <laughs> in back of him. What? <laughs> a trusted advisor seated in back of him? Excuse me. This almost got me, actually. How does that even work? So, I mean, is, so, is, so, is, so is, is he, he sitting in the advisor's lap? No, wait, is he uh, piggy riding him? <laughs> is he glued to his back? Is Are he, they Siamese twins? Is his legs attached to his to his neck? Alright, uh, let's just carry this is, on. This is, oh like, my god. Trusted advisor seated in back of him. At each at each corn <laughs> <laughs> corn <laughs> It's corn <laughs> Corn W R we are entering my mortal territory here. Oh gosh, yes. And the E key is close to the W, so no wonder that mistake was made. Okay, so it's my turn yes, now. Yes, finally. <laughs> At each corner of the chamber, a guard stood at attention, with upraised pikes supported in their hands, golden chainmail adorning their torsos and barred helmets emitting scarlet plumes and shrouding their heads. Are we describing guards or are we describing uh, reaching the enlightenment through meditation? And meeting God. I don't know. This seems very, very, very romanticized. Yes, it definitely is. The man rose from his throne to the dia surrounding it. His plush, plush turquoise robe. Is he wearing, I'm sorry, is he wearing a teddy bear suit? <laughs> I see why you would say that, but I think in this case it does make sense. It means that uh, it looks like a soft robe he's got on. Screw it, he's wearing a teddy bear suit. <laughs> yes, he is. It's funnier. <laughs> okay, the, the king is Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes. Oh. <laughs> so many jokes we could be making right now. Uh, let's just move on. His plush turquoise robe dangled loosely from his chunky frame. I think chunky has been spelt wrong. An extra C should not be here. Mm. The soldiers surrounding Rigner fell to their knees with heads bowed to the stone masonry on the floor in fearful dignity to their sovereign, Liege. Oh, great floor! We hope that you will take our offer of a barbarian with a huge sword. Okay, I like the fact that it says sovereign, and then, not happy enough, he added a comma and then liege. Because <laughs> it needed to really emphasize the fact that the guy is important. Redundancy, anything, folks! As if anything else just couldn't be enough. Redundancy at its finest. <sighs> Explain the purpose of this intrusion upon my chateau. Sh this is a chateau? I thought it was a castle. That's what I thought. Uh, your serenity, resplendent in noble grandeur. Resplendent in noble grandeur. 
Uh, wow, that's bad. We have brought this yokel. <laughs> it's Cletus, this Lord John yokel. <laughs> uh, we brought this yokel before you, the soldier gestured towards Gregner. Okay, you put a descriptive sentence in brackets, in parentheses, in the midst of an actual dialogue line. Wow. You don't, you don't do that. That is a, that is so wrong. Do that. That's terrible form. The soldier <laughs> gestured toward Grigner for the red for the red dress of your whole knowing wisdom in judgment regarding his fate. Can I please have sex with you? <laughs> if only. <sighs> Down on your knees, lot. Kneel before liege! Oh, at this rate, we actually might get sex at this point. Down on your knees, lout, and pay proper homage to your sovereign, commanded the pudgy noble of Grigner. Wait, uh, he commanded of Grigner, or maybe was he already the pudgy noble of Grigner? In that case, we might have skipped a few paragraphs, because they're already in that master slave relationship that sex partners tend to forge. Also, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out whether he commanded it, or whether he has been commanded to... Hmm. By the surly beard of Mrifk. 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 I'm so mrifked by all this. Grigner kneels to no man, scowled the massive barbarian. Oh, so this is like a mixture of Conan and Braveheart. And the rock, for, a, for good measure. Yeah, we gotta have that. You dare to deal this blasphemous act to me? You are indeed a brave stranger. You are you you are indeed brave stranger in in Soviet Russia. Uh, you know because here we are missing an A. We are missing an article here. Yeah. You are indeed brave stranger. Yet your valor smacks of foolishness. So the the valor smacked him with foolishness. This is getting better and better by the minute, by this the way. This is getting worse and worse by the minute. Of course, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> I find you to be the only fool sitting upon your pompous throne, enhancing the rolling flaps of your belly in the midst of your elaborate luxury, and I, I don't buy for a second that a freaking barbarian has such elaborate vocabulary. No. <laughs> The soldier standing at Grigner's side smote him heavily in the face with the flat of his sword, cutting short the harsh words and knocking his battered helmet to the main array with an echoing clang. Oh no, the poor man. He must, uh, we must tend to his wounds. <laughs> yeah, quickly before all of his life fluid tries to escape. I know what they mean is follow the masonry floor, but... But masonry is also a job title. I know. So... <laughs> <sighs> the paunchy noble's sagging round face flashed suddenly pale, then pastely lit up to a lustrous cherry red radiance. He's in love, apparently. <laughs> okay, we're in love. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Okay. His lips trembled with malicious rage. Wait, I thought he was happy. No, no, wait, he was red of rage. I saw you said cherry red radiance. It makes me think of something that's the opposite of rage. Yeah, cherry red radiance is a softer term. It anyway, while emitting a muffled, sibilant gibberish. This is very, very unorthodox, very unorthodox, so unorthodox. So you're telling me this whole fan, this whole, not fan fiction, this whole story isn't sibilant gibberish? It is. His sagging flaps rolled like a tub of upset jelly. <laughs> That is pretty funny. Then compressed as he sucked in his gut in an attempt to conceal his softness. Does he have a black hole for a stomach? 
I'm sorry. This this is so this is so confusing. The prince. Wait, is he a prince? I thought he was a sovereign. That's what I thought. Is he? Wasn't he a, a high emperor or something? The prince. If he's the prince, then who's the king? Oh well. The prince regained his statue. Statue? Well, apparently his statue had fallen, so he went and <laughs> and picked it up and put in its place his statue. <laughs> what the hell? They mean statue, but... Then... I know, I know, but statue sounds cooler. <laughs> Stat statue sounds... It, um... it makes it sound like as if he... Oh, I'm so mad at... Oh no, my statue. Yes, pretty much. The prince regained his statue, then spoke to the soldiers surrounding Grigner, his face conforming to an ugly expression of sadistic humor. <laughs> Take this and calf Ethan to the Vault of Misery. The Vault of Misery. <laughs> you know, you might as well have been saying, One million years dungeon! <laughs> You know? <laughs> the Vault of Misery. This, this, I don't think even any D and D Dungeons and Dragons game would feel honored to have that as a title of their lands. The Vault of Misery. This is the worst dungeon ever. <laughs> it's probably full of rats that are level and, zero. And be sure that his agonies are long and drawn out before death can release him. As you wish, sire. Your command. Who shall be aided? Immediately, pardon me. Answered the soldier on the right of Grigner as he stared into the barbarian's seemingly unaffected face. The advisor... Oh yeah, we have the advisor here, don't we? Yes, he was <laughs> stuck to his back. <laughs> yes. The advisor, seated in the back of the noble, slowly rose and advanced to the side of his master, motioning the wenches seated at his sides to remove themselves, he lowered his head and whispered to the noble, Okay, he went from being a sovereign, a liege, to a prince, and now he's just a noble. He's been degraded, apparently. <laughs> yes, he's getting... Uh, I forgot what the word is, not promoted. He's, los he's losing status by the second here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Eminence, the punishment you have decreed will cause much misery to this scum, yet it will last only a short time. Then releasing to a land beyond the sufferings of the human body. Why not mellow him in one of the subterranean vaults for a few days, then sending to life labor in one of your buried mines? To one such as he, a life spent in the confinement of the Stygian pits will be an infinitely more appropriate and lasting torture. Right then. Sure. Whatever you said. Sure. Whatever you say. A apparently the vault of misery is not miserable enough for this man. <laughs> oh, we're bringing up the big guns of torture. The noble kept his drooping double chin... Okay, he has a black hole for a belly, he has, he has the <sighs> sheen of Droopy. You know what? I am so very, very happy. <laughs> his drooping double chin in the folds of his brimming palm, meditating for a moment upon the rationality of the counselor's word. This, uh, as in word apostrophe S, instead of just, you know, words. Then raise this shaggy... <laughs> Zoics! <laughs> Zoics! I propose a harsher punishment, sire! <laughs> oh, he shall not be eating scooby snacks for the rest of his life, because they're all mine! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh. Shaggy. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, it's, I guess it's my turn, because you laughed. Yeah. <sighs> then raised his shaggy brown eyebrows and turned toward the advisor. Eyes aglow. As always, Agafnand, you speak with great what wisdom. Kind? What kind of a freaking name is this, Agafnand? I have no idea. I, I had something, but then I lost it. Obviously, he couldn't find the rest of the letters for his name. Uh, okay. 
Agathon, you speak with great wisdom. Your words ring with of great knowledge concerning the nature of one such as he. Saith in other, in other words, you're totally right, bro. Saith the king. Saith the king. We've suddenly uh, gone to uh, Macbeth style writing. Wait, so he was a sovereign, then to then Leech, a prince, then, then a, prince. a noble, and now he's back in being a monarch. This is not confusing. This is stupid. The noble turned towards. He's a noble again. The oh, no come on! The no in like in like a second. Yeah, okay, Althor, nobility and f freaking monarchy are two different things. Okay, a noble is not a king, and a king is not merely a noble. The structure here. King Ki a king is royalty, not nobility, for crying out loud! The noble turned toward the prisoner with a noticeable shimmer reflecting in his frog-like eyes. And now he's even alpha frog! But, well, apparently we're... remember, we're like half anthropomorphic animals in space. This makes no sense otherwise. And his lips contorted. It still doesn't make sense, mind you. And his lips contorting to a greasy grin. I have decided to avoid my previous decree. The prisoner shall be removed to one of the palace's underground vaults. There, he shall stay until I have decided that he has sufficiently simmered. Whereupon, which is the same word, which is one word apparently, whereupon, he is to be allowed to be spent the remainder of his days at labor in one of my minds. Actually, I do think that whereupon is one word. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. Uh, let's see. It's supposed, as in, it's supposed to be one word. All right. Upon hearing this, Grigner realized that his fate would be far less merciful than death to one such as he. Because apparently he's Cleon who likes honorable deaths. Who is used to roaming the countryside at will? A life of confinement would be more than his body and mind could stand up to. This type of life would be immeasurably worse than death. Right. So, okay, let's just carry on. I shall never understand the ways of... If, oh, wait, let me read this again. I shall never understand the ways of your twisted civilization. Clearly meant to say of, but... Yeah. Okay. I simply defend my honor and I'm condemned to life, confinement by a pig who sits upon his royal ass, wooing whores, and knows nothing of the affairs of the land he imagines to rule. Lectures Grigner, and you what, you know so much about the land and... Actually, it's... Lectors Grigner? Oh, because yeah. There's a, there's a question mark. Lectors I did not Grigner? see that question. I did not see I, that. Are we sh as in, are we sure it is Grigner who does this? <laughs> not sure? someone who's not him? <laughs> because apparently the story does not know that. <laughs> yes, yeah, about the story. <laughs> oh, gosh. Lectures Grigner? Of all people? I guess people? it does. I guess it does. Apparently he's smart enough to do this? Enough of this. Away with the slut before I lose my control. Oh, he's about to lose his control, folks. Run away. Oh, wait. Not lose. Loose. Loose my control. <laughs> his control is a bit loose. Better tight it up a little. Well, this definitely makes sense for Nicolas Cage. It's a loose cannon. Oh, oh, wait, no, wait, it's a loose cage. Oh! Oh, by the way, we have a picture of what looks like the nobleman, I think. Which I think it's supposed to be a king, a prince, a liege, a sovereign, and also a noble. Why not make him a president while we're at it, too? Sure, why not? He's the president of the Republican monarchy of princehood. <laughs> also, he's got a spliff in his mouth. Oh, dude! Well, it was the 70s, man. 
Dude, I'm totally the most bodacious monarch on the land, dude. All right, I've, I, I'm calling it. The man was high when he wrote this story. Uh, it's actually too, too purple perosy to be the uh, re the result of drag infused and induced writing. Yeah, maybe you're right. Seeing the peril. I think I think the only drag this man was in was the drag of his own hubris. Ah, uh, profound. Seeing the peril of his position, Grigner searched for an opening, crushing prudence. To a, to the to the sward, he plowed into the soldier at at his left arm, taking hold of his sword. So, okay, so he has a sward and a so, sword. Okay, so let me put this. Let me get this straight. If they had indeed sentenced him to death, he would have just taken it, no problem. But since they are imprisoning him for life, nope. Uh, rebelling time, I guess. That makes logical sense. No, it doesn't. That's the point of the joke. No, it isn't. Oh, wait, no, it is. And bounding to the dais, supporting the prince before the startled guards could regain their composure. Agathund leaped, Grig leaped Grigner and his sire. <laughs> so he actually physically <laughs> took, picked up, <laughs> lifted up the barbarian and threw it at his sire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, this vizier sure is strong. <laughs> I'm going to say this before I let you go. Uh, the, uh, to me, it sounds like he jumped towards Grigna and, uh, and then suddenly Grigna's on top of his sire. <laughs> okay, this is a wrestling match all of a sudden. <laughs> this is, this is and, uh, and apparently uh, Agafne is the ultimate warrior! <laughs> Spaceship! <laughs> okay, uh, I think it's my turn now. Yeah, because I laughed. <laughs> Agafund lipped Grigner and end his sire. So it's a triple threat match for the title, I guess. But found a sword blade permeating the laugh at his of his ribs before he could lose his weapon. He's loosed his weapon. Oh no! <laughs> wow. The councillor slumped to his knees as Grigner slid his crimson blade from Algafen's Wow Wow Not only you you have a terrible name for this guy, you can even consistently spell it. Agafen ribcage. I'm expecting Vladimort to make an appearance anytime soon. <laughs> yes. At this rate. The fat prince, uh, which uh, is back being a prince, I guess, <laughs> the moment again. stood undulating in <laughs> insurmountable fear. So he's is he doing a belly dance right now, like, oh no, I so fear this. <laughs> undulating in insurmountable fear. That was a close one. Before the edge of the fiery main comet. <laughs> God damn it! It's, it's, the the, the, the it's, the, it's the Mothman comet! <laughs> oh my gosh! They just. They went, they, they, if it's not one thing they're gonna get you with, it's another thing. <laughs> In the same sentence. Okay, I have to say he's this. The, he's the meteor man. Meteor, meteor, meteor man. Meteor, 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 meteor man. man. <laughs> oh my god. The fiery maned comet. The fiery maned comet. Okay, I have to say. The undulating, the un undulating and insurmountable fear. Okay. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna go. The fat prince stood undulating in insurmountable fear before the edge of the fiery maid comet, his flabs of jellied blubber pulsating <laughs> to the f to and fro in ripples of flowing terror. <laughs> You can, come on, you can do it. Where is your wisdom and power now? 
Your majesty. Your majesty. <laughs> For someone who, who had who who uh, did a nice lecture earlier, he can't pronounce majesty well. Growled Grigna. The prince went rigid as Grigna discerned him, glazing over his so shoulder. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I can't help him. So he's glazing over his shoulder. So he's glazing, like like icing, glazing, <laughs> glazing icing um, sugar all over his shoulder. <laughs> okay. Okay. Quick, there's a cake. <laughs> this is great. This is amazing. The prince went rigid as Grigner discerned him glazing over his shoulder. He lived to note the cause of the noble's attention, raised his sword over his head, and prepared to leash a vicious downward cleft. A downward cleft, okay. But fell short as the haft, cleft, haft, of a steel rind pike clashed against his unguarded skull. Then blackness and solitude. Silence and shrouding an ever peaceful rind, as in R E I N D, supreme. Yeah, it's missing Be a letter or two. Before me, Sira. Sira, Sira, Sira. <laughs> Before me, Sira. Before me, as always. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no, nobly cackled. What just happened? I uh, the, 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 the died. <laughs> I think somebody knocked him out, but who did it? And what the hell is this? Who the hell is this? Huh. Nobly cackled. What the freaking? Apparently, apparently, from this laughter, I'm going to theorize. It's the clown from Day of the Tentacle. Ha, 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 ha. Sure, add insane clown posses to this freaking <laughs> a alien animal <coughs> world that, we're, that apparently we are currently inhabiting in this messed up fantasy story. Oh gosh, this is like a sci-fi story with anthropomorphic animals and, uh, and Conan the Barbarian, Ultimate Warrior Wrestling, and, <laughs> and, and demoted princes all around. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think we're done for tonight. Oh, gosh. We read the first two chapters. They were exhausting, but interesting in their own ways. Uh, so, yes. This is gonna be a thing. <laughs> yes. You know, it's only seven chapters long, so... Uh, and one of the chapters, I am told, it's nothing but the description of a room. Wow. Which is bad. We need to read this. <laughs> we do. And we're going to. Oh, gosh. This is... Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, there is purple prose, and then there is the Eye of Argon. Yes, this cannot be labeled as anything. This has to be its own thing now. But again, I remind you, there is worse out there. Oh gosh. Then... Then again, then again... This was published at the time. So... Yes. Uh, oh, think my, about that. A lot of people must feel really smart. After buying this book, huh? Uh, well, I think we're done here. So yeah, we're good done. Night. Good night, everybody. Good, and take good night, everybody. And don't forget to uh, undulate in insurmountable fear as you face the fiery main comet Be of your uh, <laughs> of your pulsating ripples of flowing terror. What am I even saying? <laughs> Uh, and, and, and also, what did we learn today, Davar? We learned that uh, to deal with escaping life fluid, 
you need to enforce some rules, you know? Yes. And because otherwise, the life fluid is going to grow even more rebellious and will try to escape from home more times. We need to discipline the little guy, you know? That's, yes. That's the, 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 we also need to get, get some wenches. Otherwise, he shall never grow up to be as good as his big brother, Swirled Crimson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we also learned that uh, uh, bovine cowmen are also ovals. And we also learned that that uh, royalty is a fleeting moment. So fleeting, you really keep changing status every two minutes, apparently. <laughs> I mean, it's more fluctuating than the freaking market. <laughs> okay, with that said, good night everybody. Take care of yourselves. And thus ended the first ever so cleverly recorded reading session of the Yume team of reading dramatis dramatis of Lectio Suprema. That was the baffling conclusion of the night that was a night that was baffling concluded in bewilderment and confusion, confounding bafflement. No one's gonna write a book based on you. Well, they totally should. Don't do it. Come on, oh well, pretty <laughs> sure somebody had to be written a fan fiction about us too. No! <laughs> and you see any kind... That kind of fanfiction. <laughs> you know, if somebody actually does write no. a fanfiction about us. No. no let, me, let me say this. If somebody actually does write a fanfiction about us two, we're going to read it. No. We are going to read it. No, 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 no. I no, promise no. you this. We are going to read it. Uh, no. <laughs> Unless it's too graphic, but other than that, we are so going to read it. No. Oh, yes. No. Yes. So it is said, so it shall be. I'd rather go reread the scene of, 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 of Grigner showing off his penis sword <laughs> 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> well, the story is not over yet, so oh gosh, <laughs> you you never know when the when his broad sword might make another appearance. Yeah, and slash the miss. Oh, okay, um, this show concluded ten minutes ago, so bye. Bye, take care.